Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the longest repot on YouTube. Um, this is probably going to be just as long. I did not know you guys were going to enjoy that video so much, honestly. I was like, who the hell is going to sit through a two hour repot? Um, and you did. You really, you really did. So, um, part two is going to be all plant questions. I am not answering any more personal questions. If you have not been watching my previous videos, I did a little bit of a re-jig in this plant room. I got rid of my table, my little glass table that was in here, and I'm ordering a new table which is not here yet because I did not order it yet. <laughs> so we're on the floor. Um, I think the last time, I think the first part I was filming for like five hours or something. We might be here that long too and I'm doing it on the floor this time so if you don't see me for a while after this video it's because I'm getting my legs amputated or maybe just the whole lower half of my body amputated because I am gonna be hurting on the floor but we got to do it so as usual I'm gonna show you guys the roster for today and we sort of have a lot but there's a lot of small ones so I'm um, just going to start with the one closest to me. We've got the uh, really weird, funky mandula that doesn't really have an identity yet. Um, it doesn't really want to be a mandula, and I'm not really mad at it. So I did try to size up my previous mandula that went to absolute crap, so now we're starting over. I'm going to get this on a pole get it repotted into something slightly larger and we're going to call it a day on that. Next one is this um, Philodendron Splendid that's really been, it's really been pissing me off. This light is also pissing me off. I'm going to have like a massive headache after filming today. So who was I? Oh, so this Splendid that's been pissing me off. It's got the longest freaking stem ever, but I'm going to actually try. Um, the roots look fine. I need to just repot it, get it on a pole. And then I'm going to chuck it into a corner and just hope it does okay because it's really pissing me off. The next one was labeled an Angam Arcanum. I'm not sure if it's actually that. Um, I got this one from my mom a while back and honestly I've just been neglecting this thing so much and it has still managed to like grow for me. Not well, but I mean it's growth nonetheless. I feel like this is one of those Anthurium that would probably enjoy being in a cabinet but I'm just not I'm just not doing that anymore so uh yeah we're just gonna repot it because this was probably put in here like two years ago and the poor thing is just not doing well so that's one I definitely want to address today the next one is I think frick I think this is the mag lobes I think from Amanda, um, obviously I'll put in the right ID once I confirm with her, but this one has been on the struggle a little bit. It's uh, the only one in my collection right now that has thrips. I don't know why, it's so freaking random and I've had it isolated for a really, really long time. Um, and yeah, I think it's just time to, oh, okay, well that's not coming out. It's just time to get it out of here. So I'm gonna repot this one too. Um, I've got a few small ones in here. So uh, this one is another plant from Amanda. This is my um, Alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath grown from a corm and first leaf is, it's something. Um, she grew inside of my propagation dome. It was like grown up against the, the top of it. It was a disaster. So she's looking a little rough, but we're gonna rescue her today. This one is another one that I need to confirm. It's moss. Um, I need to confirm the ID with Amanda. I believe this is potentially a Lux Pap. I'm not 100% sure, but I got this one from Amanda too. So um, yeah, gotta get this one repotted. And then here's what I'm going to show you. Uh, not a demonstration, but an example. Um, I can't remember which video. I talked about it in um, where I kind of discussed seedlings and buying seedlings and talking about how all seedlings are not created equal. 
Um, in my last batch, I had definite strong seedlings and I had really, really weak ones. I threw out a lot of the weak ones because I don't want to have any weak seedlings because they're just going to be a pain in the ass. I didn't want to sell or give away any weak seedlings because it would just cause a headache for those people. So um, for the sake of experimentation, I did keep some of the weaker seedlings that had a little bit of a... Uh, I mean, a lot of my seedlings all look different, so I wanted to keep it for that reason. But this is from the same. This is from the same seed batch. Like, look how large this one is in comparison to these that are just constantly struggling. They either just rot, or they abort their leaves, or they just turn like these really, really gross yellow color. Like, I don't know what the hell is up with it. And then there's. A seedling like this that has just been living out on my shelf it was grown here for a long time when you know all of my anthurium were struggling um, yeah and it's like so much bigger by the way if you um, don't know which seedlings I'm talking about I crossed my anthurium crystal mag with my forgetty eye so these are some of the seedlings and they're super variable like this one definitely looks more like crystal mag um, I was hoping that one of my seedlings would have like a fused sinus, but I, I just think they're all going to have a sinus like the Crystal Mag. This one kind of has like a faux <laughs> closed sinus, so I'm just curious to see how this one progresses. But anyway, uh, example of weak and strong seedlings in the same seedling batch. I am also going to be repotting this seedling because this soil is super old and just like crusty and gross <laughs> another i love that i haven't like prepared the ids for these in advance but here's the idea of this another amanda plant um doing pretty well it won it won <laughs> this one is in tree fern fiber and i actually have not checked the roots on this at all since i got it i've just kind of assumed that it's been doing well but i do want to get this out of here because the stem is getting pretty long and i want to make sure it's tucked in Another anthurium, or we're repotting a lot of, or mostly anthurium today actually. Um, this one is my spaghetti eye that I got from uh, Alice. The growth pattern has been really, really weird. So this one is on a top shelf in my living room, and all of the leaves are kind of pointed down because I think it's searching for light. Um, and I, I don't know, I just kind of felt like it was getting enough light on that shelf, but clearly it's like showing me that it doesn't, it doesn't like it. Also, it is making way for this new guy coming in and I wanted to get it repot, repotted before it fully came out. But, um, you know, besides her looking a little cr crunchy and crusty, she's, she's growing sl slowly but surely. Second to last one is this Dayun Idule. I'm not gonna lie, I have really, really struggled to love this one recently because it's just kind of been like this gangly, weird thing and it's not growing as cute as I thought it would grow. And I've really been trying, like I, I thought maybe I just needed to like increase the light or like, I don't know, increase the warmth. I feel like I've tried everything and this one is just like not having it. I'm still being blinded by this light. So anyway, that one is in soil, it's in a pot with drainage, it dries out super fast. Um, the drip tray is really freaking shallow and it just spills everywhere, it pisses me off. So it's going into no drainage today. And then finally, the last one is this Philodendron Tenu that has needed me ages ago. <sighs> I had this growing over here and it grew into the shelf and just ripped itself but it kind of looks like it's starting to really, really like shape into something. Like this leaf is looking pretty wide. The venation is getting um, a little bit more prominent. And I think if I had allowed it the space to grow, it would have been a super, super cute leaf, but that's okay. The next catafil looks quite large. The stem is getting thicker. And yeah, I think that this would appreciate some larger pants some new soil and a new pole so that is the last one on today's roster am i prepared for this mentally yes am i prepared for this physically no because my back is ow, already hurting <laughs> what is this 
No, seriously, what plant is this? Look how beautiful it is. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. Holy heck. What is that? I feel like I'm potting mostly soil plants today, which is kind of a shift from pond, but um, honestly, uh, there's gonna be no rhyme or reason to who I'm choosing. We're just, it's all gonna be, it's all gonna be a hot mess anyway. So, um, I am testing out new contacts today. I hate them, they are rotating. Everything looks blurry and um, it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great, great day. So, uh, who wants to go first? Anyone, anyone? Speak to me. Let's just start nice and easy with my very, very good boy seedling. So, uh, getting into the first plant question, to be honest, I think I have 30 questions to get through, no joke. Um, I don't know if I'll get through all of them, but we surely will try. We will try. One Insta-hyped plant that you think just isn't worth it. So I was having, like, in part one, I had discussed um, a plant that I thought was, like, hyped before, now, and what's gonna be in the future, so you can go watch that video. So I was like, well, let's see what the algorithm algorithm oh let's see what the algorithm is perfect you can't see anything that's great oh my gosh i have no upper body strength okay so okay i was having i, I wanted to know like what the algorithm was pushing onto other people because i feel like it really it really varies um from person to person so i opened up my question on Instagram and was like, which plants are being hyped on your social media right now? And I compiled a list of the five most popular answers, which I will go through. The first one is basically any variegated alocasia minus the fry deck. Um, I think the fry deck is always gonna be like a loved alocasia in terms of like variega variegated alocasias because it's the most common variegated alocasia that you can you can get pretty much. But there's all these people with like variegated dragon scales, variegated um, silver dragons, variegated, uh, what's that other one, Amazonicas. And they actually look really cool. There's a few that I, I really enjoy and wouldn't mind having. Um, I definitely wouldn't pay the prices that they are, but they are pretty. I get why they're you know, so popular. Um, I get why people want them. I get why the algorithm is pushing it. And yeah, I, I, I don't think, I don't think this one is overhyped. I think these ones are worth the hype, but for me personally, not worth the price that they're currently at right now. The next um, most popular one was the Fallopia multiflora. Um, I will insert a photo here of the person that I saw um, had it sort of, I guess, first on Instagram. I saw this photo last year and I, I didn't really think much of it, to be honest. I think it's a really pretty plant if you're into like pink plants, but me personally, I I would prefer it if it didn't have the pink, if it was just green or if it was just green and white variegation or like green on green variegation, but I can definitely see why it's being hyped right now and what the appeal is. But I, for me, I think it's, I think it's overhyped and I, it's probably not a plant that I would ever purchase. Here's another one that was really popular. It was like Monstera creme brulee, Monstera ocean mint, Monstera white monster. Just, just basically like all of these different forms of variegated monsteras that are like coming out right now. And to be fully honest with you, I freaking have no clue what any of them are. I don't really keep up with all of that. I feel like it's become so overwhelming because so many have come out. But I will say that some of them that I've been seeing that are becoming more popular or like that are highly sought after, legit just look so sickly and ill where i'm like why would you even want that no shade it's just even if this plant is worth what it is i would never like even if someone handed 
handed it to me, I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you, though. I will say that there's this, like, creme brulee one that's going around. And I don't know if that's, like, an actual, you know, an actual thing or if it's just someone isolated a mutation of one and, and just started selling it. Like, whatever, whatever. The bottom line is I like the variation of the creme brulee even though there's like people tagging creme brulee on different monsteras and I feel like they look so different where I'm like, okay, so what is a creme brulee? But I will say that some of them are really pretty, but then some of them literally just look like they should be set on fire. Sorry, sorry, I'm just saying. They look so sick. Sicker than the variegated Sodoroy. It's like, why is everyone hating on the variegated Sodoroy? But then there's all of these monsters coming out that literally looks like it belongs in The Last of Us. What am I doing, honestly? Oh, should I put Lekka down at the bottom? So my verdict, whether it is overhyped, underhyped, I think it's this is another one that is overhyped in my book. Another one was the Monstera Burly Marx's Flame. If you keep up with my videos, you probably know that this is one of my top wishlist plants. So I'm definitely not going to say this one is overhyped. I feel like this one is super trendy and um, hyped right now because it's just a beautiful plant and it's becoming more accessible to people, people like me. Um, I'm not quite there yet in terms of being able to afford one that is not in the hundreds but you know getting close so i'm gonna say yeah this one is worth the hype in my opinion i think it's one of the most beautiful plants out there um and then here's another one that i okay so i'm gonna throw out a few names philodendron orange princess philodendron persimmon princess philodendron orange marmalade and there was one more if i can find it Oh yeah, just another orange princess. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea what any of these are. I think I know which one the marmalade one is because of um, Tyler's Instagram, which I will link in the description. Um, I will say that like, like orangey variegation is probably my least favorite. I don't know if I mentioned that in my other video because it was a question, but I just, I just don't really like orange variegation. To me, it kind of looks like a plant that's sick and on its way out, that's dying off. But this orange marmalade that Tyler's been posting is actually a very handsome plant. It's a very good looking plant. And um, I think I more so like the, the midrib of it. And I like the texture and the shape of the leaf. I'm not a huge fan of that sort of mottled, is it mottled? Like sort of grainy mottled variegation. I just think it's purely the texture and shape of this leaf that I love so much, plus that really prominent midrib. Um, so I'm sorry, I don't know what the other two, two are. I'll hopefully try and find photos of the orange princess and the orange persimmon princess. <laughs> Um, and throw them in and kind of show you what they look like but yeah uh, th those were another one that was another one that was really really popular in this uh, in the submissions the last one that was the most popular response was kind of a surprise to me but the fillet engine strawberry shake I, I, I don't know I I haven't been getting pushed that in my um, on my socials really uh, there's really only one person that I can think of that like kind of posts about the strawberry shake but even then it's not like a constant thing and I don't really see a lot of like ISOs being put out for the strawberry shake so yeah it's just interesting what like the algorithm is pushing on to certain people because apparently there are a good amount or a handful of people out there, um, at least that responded in my questions, that are all being flooded with the strawberry shake apparently, but I'm definitely not one of them. And I will say that I really do not enjoy, I don't enjoy the philodendron strawberry shake. I don't really like the variegation of it, and it's just not a plant that I can see myself loving at all. So yeah, just my opinion. Um, so to me, I'm gonna say that's overhyped and kind of an old trend, I feel. 
Uh, so yeah, there's that question. Um, the second question is, where do you purchase Ethereum? Um, who are your favorite online sellers? I'm not the right person to ask. I actually don't. I actually don't buy plants online, really. Like I get most of my plants through local sellers, friends, and like my family, I guess. Like the stuff that they have in the states, and then I get them from like nurseries and just like local shopping. I can't even remember the last plant that I bought online, to be honest. Like, I can name a few that I did purchase online, like my um, Euphorbia balsamifera, my booby cactus I bought online. I tend to buy, like, the weirdo plants online, like the non-aeroids, but I don't know if I've ever purchased, like, an aeroid online. Actually. I did purchase an Ethereum pendulifolium from Sweet Life Flora, which she's based in, I think, Ontario. But yeah, I don't purchase like online for plants. So sorry, I'm not like, I'm not the right person to ask this question. But if anyone else has recommendations for online sellers, please feel free to use the comments to link them and hopefully help other people find some good plants online. So this one's done, um, really not much to it. I really just wanted to upsize that pot, get it into some better soil and re-inoculate it. And I really don't think that one is gonna throw a tantrum at all. Hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. Uh, I think the next one that I'll do is this Inga Marcana because I'm just like itching to get this poor thing out of here. And then I'll move on to the next question. Um, how do you encourage root growth on baby plants? It kind of depends, like does this mean like in terms of propagating or just like in general? Because if we're talking about like encouraging roots on like a baby, baby plant or baby propagation, I thought I just saw a spider. I will say that I've had like in terms of the substrate, I've had a lot of luck with um, moss. I really don't like using moss that much anymore because it's just it's kind of a pain in the ass to to deal with once things get really root bound and I'm just yeah I'm kind of over it. Tree fern fiber has also been a great um, substrate but I would not recommend using tree fern fiber as a rooting substrate for Ethereum. I have this video here that um, I never did an update on because I forgot. <laughs> but uh, actually things were rooting pretty well in there until I went on a trip and it didn't get watered for two and a half weeks and they all just completely dried out and just turned to mush. So if you're not the type of person that is like really, really on top of like your propagations and stuff or like watering in general, I would not recommend tree fern fiber. Um, especially for propagations in a small vessel because the smaller the vessel the quicker that that tree fern fiber is going to dry out but if you have a larger vessel with just tree fern fiber and no amendments it actually can retain water for a pretty uh, long time but yeah I lost almost all of those propagations at that time when I got back from my trip because it had just completely dried out so I don't recommend that for baby plants um, if you're not super on top of your propagations. And I don't think that tree fern fiber is my go-to substrate for um, Anthurium anyway. Moss is always kind of like a safe bet in terms of, I mean, I, I consider it to be a safe substrate. Um, perlite is also a great one. Also, if we're talking about encouraging root growth, uh, if you are open to it, cleaning your chunks, I use a earwax scraper. You can get them in nail kits, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them at a drugstore. And just kind of scraping the surface of, like scraping the soft tissue on that outer layer around these areas here where they're like barked over and calloused. Um, yeah, that can really, really activate root growth as well. So I would just make sure you're working with like a clean stem, make sure that the tissue around your stem is exposed to your substrate and um, try
try and put it in some kind of closed system, whether it's like a greenhouse or even just something with no drainage or I don't know, something where it's not just like out on a shelf because I don't find a lot of su success um, growing my baby plants that way. Oh, that just fell right off. Okay. This root system is terrible. I almost want to just move this to tree fern fiber, like a tree fern fiber soil mix because it's got a long way to go. And I do want to cal or I want to remove some of this callusing on this stem because I want to be able to like activate some of these these roots and stuff, although this will be fine in rooting, but I'm just, my gut is telling me to clean it. So I'm actually just gonna get this soaked in some water for a while and then we'll come back to it once it's softened up. And then I think I'm gonna work on this Diune or Diune Edule, even though it's freaking wet because I just watered it. I just like, I've been so tired of this vessel and I don't know why it's taken me so long to get it out of here. Okay, sorry, next question. I'm starving. Oh, oh, so yeah, encouraging root growth. Um, use a scraper if you don't already and if you're comfortable with doing that, obviously, just be careful. And then uh, I've had really good luck using rooting hormone, so I would try and sprinkle some like rooting hormone on the roots and even using mycorrhizal inoculants, um, the ones that I can recommend right now obviously are TPS Billions which is this one and uh, Great White. I've also used Dynamico although I will say that Dynamico is not my favorite now after using Great White and TPS. Like I literally almost want to chop this back and start over because like this gangly thing is really pissing me off. It's not supposed to look like this. It's supposed to look like this. This root system is teeny tiny. Okay. I think I'm gonna put this actually in a sandier mix, like my cactus mix. And don't ask me why, it's just my gut feeling right now. How did you get into Ethereum? What was my first Ethereum? Hmm. Dang, that's a good question. It's like stuff that I like haven't thought about in a while. Honestly, I think my first Ethereum might have been an Ethereum Crystallinum. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Actually, yeah, the first Ethereum I ever imported was a Viroquiana, but I did buy a Crystallinum, I think from someone locally. I might have to actually look back on my Instagram, and I'm sure I would have posted what my first Ethereum was. You know what? I think my first Ethereum might have been the Pendulifolium. Am I wrong? I probably am wrong. Ooh, ooh, I'm getting somewhere. Okay. This is where I first moved into this place, which means I'm getting close. Okay, here we are. Here we are. I really only got into Ethereum during the pandemic. I was not an Ethereum girl before, before the pandemic. It was the Pendulifolium. That was my first... That was my first Ethereum. So um, the reason that I even wanted to get an Ethereum was because of Amanda Ray Wright. She would keep posting her um, Ethereum guitar folium on her stories and stuff, and she would do these like really, really ASMR like like strokes. <laughs> she would stroke one of the the straps, right? And um, I was like, I have to have one of those. There's no way I can go my entire life without having one. So, um, yeah, I think it was in 2019, I purchased a Vitar Folium from this shop in Canada, and um, it ended up being a Pendula Folium, which I liked, but it just was not, it wasn't a Vitar Folium, and I really, really wanted a Vitar Folium. So, yeah, I ended up with the Pendula Folium, and it was a surprisingly easy Ethereum. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, so then after I realized that it wasn't a Vitara Folium, then I actually purchased a Vitara Folium from someone locally, and I can't remember who it was, but that would have been, like, officially my second Ethereum, 
And then I think the third Anthurium I had was the Barocuyanum that I purchased locally from a friend. It's crazy because looking back, I would have 100% thought that the Crystallinum or even the um, Clarinervium was my first Anthurium, but I guess it wasn't. So you learn something new every day. All right, we got this broad in a very chunky, sandy, gritty mix. I don't know if it's even gonna like it, but that's the path she's taken today. I don't know. I might chop this thing off. It's really pissing me off. Maybe she'll be lucky and live to see another day. Okay. Um, so, jeez. So yeah, that's how I got into Ethereum. Those were like my first three and uh, it's been kind of a love-hate relationship um, since then. I will say that even now to, to this day, I am way more of a philodendron monstera girl. Like if I had to choose between only keeping philodendron or only keeping Ethereum in my collection, I would definitely choose the philodendron. So yeah, I mean, I still love Anthurium, obviously, like they're beautiful, they're very rewarding to grow, and it's a much different experience than um, growing philodendron, but I will say that I have much better luck with the philodendron, and I'm still like really trying to learn the way of Anthurium because it's, sometimes it's just this great mystery to me, and um, that's the tea. I think I'm gonna answer one more question and repot one more plant before I have lunch because I'm starving. The next one is how do you care for palms, like palm trees? Um, my best advice that I can give you is don't. Don't, just don't care for them, don't get them. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just kidding, we love a good palm. But, I personally do not have a lot of luck with them. I have one palm in my collection and seriously, it's been a freaking fluke. I don't know why this thing is still alive, but she's with us and um, she's a trooper. I hate drainage holes, man. This root is gonna have to be severed off. Look at that. It's like a big juicy root that has grown in and out of a hole and I, I won't be able to free it. That is really, really disappointing, disheartening, and disgusting. Maybe I can try, but is it really worth one root to go through all of this trouble? Probably not. One day, one day, I'm just not gonna have any plants with drainage. Just you wait. I'm gonna break this, man. No, she's ripped apart. Oh, sorry, sorry about it. Okay, hey, no. Oh my God, that was a huge one. Raise your hand if you've ever been personally victimized by a drainage hole. What was I talking about? What was the last question that we were talking about? Gosh, my memory is just I'm telling you. She's like real life Dory. Still has a pretty substantial root system. I ain't mad at it, but I definitely am not happy about breaking that massive root off. Actually, I'm kind of pissed about it. All right, what I'm gonna do is get this rinsed off the house and I'm gonna eat some lunch. You will go on an ad break and we will reconvene and answer more questions.
allowed to speak again because he's off his meeting. But he has another meeting in like an hour and a half, so I kind of want to get this done before then because I'm fading fast. So while my husband was on that meeting, obviously I showed you how I cleaned this stem off a little bit. So now I'm going to be repotting it since it's been sitting in hydrogen peroxide for a little bit now. And I'm just going to be using um, this vessel because it's just going to be, wait, where is this one going to be? Um, I think I left off telling you guys about the only palm that I have, which I will throw in a photo of here. I love this palm so much. It originally had been um, living on my balcony, which it will go back on the balcony this spring. Um, I did not take it in early enough and it was out there during the first snow. It was there um, below freezing temperatures. It was covered in snow and it did not like, two of the leaves like turned a little bit black, but the rest of the plant was totally fine. And um, so I brought it back in and ever since it's been back inside of the house, it's grown like three new leaves. Like it's just such a trooper. It did not care about those temps at all. So it's been a pretty hardy plant actually. I have no more soil left. This has just been like a great little plant. Like just one that I've enjoyed so much. So it is possible to grow palm. But the reason that I made that snarky comment um, when I first read this question was because palms indoor, growing palms indoors, it's just, it's a hit or miss, you know? If you've got plenty of really, really bright, um, direct light that comes into your apartment and you're putting that sucker like right next to the window, the chances of it growing, it's probably pretty good, but your chances of also getting spider mites on your palm is very high as well. Um, it, I just feel like they either don't grow well indoors because of, of a lack of light or they are just so um, pest prone and I don't know. I just, I don't have a lot of luck growing palms inside. I feel like a lot of the palms that I do see grown inside, they don't look that great unless you live like somewhere tropical or something. I don't know. That's honestly... That's just my my observation. I just feel like, I feel like palms should just be grown outdoors. But if I had to give you any advice, just from my experience because of the palm that I have, I have grown a majesty palm indoors before. I've grown a Chinese fan palm. And I will say regular showers, like regular thorough showers, like weekly if you can, just to like keep any pests away. And then I'd also say like regular watering. I found that with especially the Majesty Palm, um, if I wasn't watering it weekly, the tips would go yellow and dry out so fast. Um, but when I watered it weekly and always made sure it had some source of water in the substrate, um, it was fine. But mine ultimately succumbed to spider mites and I just couldn't be bothered fighting that battle. So yeah. Um, that's my experience with palms. I'm not saying it's impossible to grow palms indoors. Um, my opinion is just leave palms for outside and, uh, yeah, if you do grow it indoors, good for you, but, you know, I have not been that lucky. They're, they've always just been more of, like, a pain in my ass. Let's move on to the next question. Have you seen any differences between using TPS and using Dynamico? Yes. So um, Dynamico is the second Myco brand that I tried. The first brand, I honestly can't remember what it was. I'll see if I can throw up the name, if I can find it that far back in my Amazon purchases. I think I'm the one that bought it, I, or I might have shared it with a friend. I'll, anyway, I'll see if I can find the name of it. I tried that one, um, and then I tried Dynamico, and I had, I mean, honestly, I did notice results with Dynamico. But I'll, I will say in terms of just um, root growth, it was not as like nearly as fast as TPS and Great White. If I had to make any recommendations on um, a Myco, it would be one of those two. Dynamico isn't bad either, but I will say it just was not as fast as the other two. 
thoughts on Dynagro? Should I use it with CalMag? Um, I have no opinion on Dynagro. I have never used it before, but I believe Alice uses it, my friend Erin uses it, and I think even Jing uses it. But um, yeah, they seem to be liking it. Uh, I feel like their Ethereum are doing really, really well, like all three of them. Um, they're growing the, them really well, so obviously I have no first-hand experience, so I'm not going to make any kind of recommendation, but let's just say that I have friends that use it, and they like it, and they've continued to use it, so I trust their opinion. I'm just, right now, I'm in my TPS era, and I'm really trying to like document and observe my growth using TPS, so I'm trying to not dabble in too many fertilizers at once because then I'm not going to know <laughs> who's doing what. But yeah, hopefully this Ingomarcanum, if it is an Ingomarcanum, um, I hope it appreciates this denser soil mix because that puppy would dry out so fast. Uh, and it said the second part of that question was, should I use it with Dynamico with CalMag? Honestly, I, I say just whatever your fertilizing method is, like if you, it, whatever indoor plant fertilizer you're using, I would say to also use CalMag. I don't, I can't think of like a fertilizer that's out there on the market where like adding CalMag would be an overkill, but yeah, I'm just pro CalMag. I feel CalMag has helped me so much with plants that I've struggled with historically, so yeah. I'm a CalMag girl, and if anyone ever asks me if I sh if they should use CalMag, I am always gonna say yes. Um, I have two more soil plants. <sighs> I'm just stalling because it's breaking ten you. Oh my word. Okay, let's just do this one first. Um, honestly, this one is like not root bound at all in this soil. Like it's still kind of getting established in here. So what I think I'm gonna do is just add a pole to this pot and not worry about repotting it. So I think we're gonna do a lazy pole. <sighs> okay, so I'm just taking this old lazy pole and I'm going to be rooting it along this side of the plant where there is mostly stem exposed. Um, oh, only one of this is rounded. It must be like two or three because Pudge is like tapping away. Yep, it's 2.30. This is a time where we normally would like cuddle in bed together and take a little cat nap. Not today, buddy. I wish though. So I'm just making like the world's largest lazy pole. Okay. Okay. I bet you he saw his reflection in the window. I can almost guarantee that's why he's barking. <laughs> Nothing triggers him more than his own reflection. And you know what, same. So I'm gonna get the fattest strap in here and see if this fits. Let's put this down at the base to enclose it. I've got all of these like, cause I keep every single strap that I make because I like to be able to just reuse it. Obviously that's like one of the major perks of these lazy poles, but it's always like finding the right size that's tricky. Um, I think I'll sprinkle some mico up here and fill some more soil. Oh, am I answering the question? Guys, I'm like sleeping with my eyes open. Tips on transferring soil plants to pond. Very good question. Um, the good thing is, is that soil roots are very, very hardy, I find. And I feel like soil to pond is easier than going from pond to soil, in my opinion. Um, I will say though that if you are moving, if you're gonna be doing that transfer for the first time, um, I would opt for a pond that's a little bit more light, so meaning add a little bit more perlite, don't just do straight pond. Make sure you give it some mycorrhizal inoculants. 
I would keep the water line slightly lower for the first like two, two and a half weeks, but make sure that the pond doesn't completely dry out. So um, I don't know how you guys water your um, semi-hydro plants, but I, I've seen some people kind of just like water on one side and then just let it rise, which is, I mean, it's fine because like the wicking will do um, a lot of the work, but I always find it's best to water it thoroughly over all of the pond so that all the pond is wet when you water it and then the wicking can happen even easier. So that's how I would recommend you add water to um, the vessel for the first time. That or at least make sure that the pond that you're potting with is rinsed and wet. Um, don't just pot it in dry pond and then add water like on one side. Um, I just I just find that like the chances of things going awry is higher when you do it that way. And then honestly, just say a little prayer and, and pray that the, the plant gods are with you. Something is telling me that this is going to be another failed attempt at trying to size up a mandula, but you really never know until you try, right? So here we are. And I know I'm not using moss anymore, but I'm also using moss, so. <sighs> Attempt number 500. Confidence level is like a four. Seriously, I just. <laughs> if this fails, we're not trying again. Nope. Um, who wants to go next? My tenue? I think the rest are gonna be in pawn, so let's just do this guy. This poor thing needed me like ages ago. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas. Okay, next question. Why are allocations such bitches? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had an answer for you. Um, but I really don't know. Hot take. In theory, Moroccanum is overrated. I'm gonna make some people mad. This is purely based on my experience with the Moroccanum. She doesn't like me. The queen, she said, Sherman? No, we don't like her. Do you guys want to see my, my queen? Do you guys want to see her in all her freaking glory? Listen, if you struggle with the Rokuyanum, look away now because mine is so beautiful, you won't even believe your eyes and you're going to be extremely jealous and you're going to say, why is Sherman so good at growing this plant and I just suck ass? Why? What is it? Is she just a natural plant god or... Is she just extremely skillful? Ow. Overrated. So overrated. Do you have any plants on planks and what are your opinions on it? I, hello, I don't have any plants on planks, but I have actually been curious about trying it. Um, I know it works, lots of people do it, um, but I will say that I think that growing plants on planks, it's a lot more enjoyable of an experience if your plants are like outside or in a greenhouse where you can literally just take a hose to it and keep keep it wet um otherwise like if you just have it out in a living room or whatever like how are you gonna keep that wet you know what i mean at least with these moss poles that are enclosed in plastic it's like it's easy to water them and um not get like water everywhere now i know i sound like i'm pushing an agenda but this is literally just like this is just my life, like this is my experience, my opinion, but I will say if I had an outdoor greenhouse or a greenhouse in general where I could literally just take a freaking hose, you bet your damn ass I'd be using some planks. Because I mean essentially it's just like a tree, you know, epiphytes grow on trees, a plank is literally a little tiny tree, and um, yeah, I've seen roots fully growing on it and hold and clinging on to it. 
Um, I don't believe that you'll be able to like fertilize it like you would a regular moss pole where it has like the it, it has like its own root system and you're able to get water through the plant that way but in terms of like sizing up your plant I feel like it does the exact same thing and it's way easier than using a moss pole you literally just stick the plank in there use some like velcro ties and call it a day I've even seen people have success size up plants indoors just using a bamboo stick with no kind of you know enclosure on it and it's not even wrapped around the bamboo pole I think it just feels like it's supported by the pole and it knows that it's there and it sizes up um, I mean I don't know if we can give all the credit to the bamboo pole or if it's like other conditions that they're giving it but I have seen some impressive freaking growth on hobby hobbyist other hobbyist plants just using a bamboo stick um, my thoughts on planks are that if if you like planks and it's been working for you then go for it I personally can't use I, I wouldn't use it just because like I would find it too hard to like I don't know get keep it like damp enough that like the roots will note that it's there and I just don't really personally like the look of the of the plank but if it was in a greenhouse that's a totally different story I don't really care too much about like the aesthetics of things when it's in a greenhouse but for plants that are just like out in the living room I I want my space to still look like a home you know and it's not just like a massive greenhouse that's not really the look I go for or it's not the look that I really enjoy so yeah I just I wouldn't I wouldn't like enjoy seeing just a bunch of like tall bamboo sticks out there or like tall planks. It's just not for me. God, working with freaking moss is just an absolute nightmare. Oh my gosh. My back is hurting so much. I don't think that this video is gonna be as long as the first one because I don't think I'll last that long on the floor. My back is in pain. I need to order that table. This is like a must now. This is redonkulous. I can't be doing four hour repots on the floor. My ass is flat enough. I feel like my ass is so flat now, it's like concave. I'm not gonna be chopping any of this because it's still like a pretty decent size and it's not a size that I'm feeling overwhelmed with. I am enjoying the growth so far on it and I don't wanna disrupt anything. So we're gonna leave it. In terms of a pot, I think I'm gonna pot it in this. Uh, next question is how often do you find yourself watering plants in no drainage? Um, this one really just depends what substrate I'm using in the no drainage vessel and where the plant is in my house. So the um, vessels that are outside of greenhouses are drying out faster than the ones in greenhouses so I definitely have to water those a little bit more. Um, my plants in pond in small vessels dry out the fastest no matter where it is inside of a greenhouse outside of a greenhouse if I have any vessel that's around this size in pond that baby's gonna be dry in like three days the ones that I water the least are my no drainage vessels larger than larger than this anything larger than this that's just in soil that one those ones dry out much um, much slower so oh, frick, I have to do a poll. Am I doing a regular poll? I, I think that she's, I think she's ready for like a big girl poll and can um, re retire from the lazy poll, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I know this might seem excessive for this plant, but I think it's gonna live in here for a while and I don't wanna have to change the poll out. So um, yeah, I will say with my no drainage plants, a minimum of once a week. But depending on the vessel, depending on the vessel size and the substrate that is inside of that vessel, sometimes I can get away with like every week and a half or like every other week. And it also depends on um, where the plant is, in or outside of a greenhouse, and if uh, it's summer, or winter. So it's it's really not a black and white answer. There's just a lot of different factors that go into what the answer might be. 
So let us assemble this and answer the next question. What are some strap leaf and theoriums you like? Obviously, um, I've got to say the Vitarifolium and the Politiflorum are some of the favorites. When Lingeri is also a favorite. Uh, Frederick Stallii. I wouldn't say these are favorites, but maybe some that you guys can look into. The Pendens is another one. Pendulifolium, like I mentioned before. SP Morona. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Pseudo Spectable. There's the Lutheri. That one's like nice and blate. And then there's the Palinquence. The um, Anthurium Pung. Punctatum, 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 I don't know if I'm saying that right. And then um, one more I can think of is the Anthurium Mongestipitatum. Um, that one is not super popular. I feel like really only like long-term collectors um, have have one, and it's not a it's not a plant that's being offered really. I, I would say anywhere, like in terms of like, you know, like online shops having it or even like Echogenera or Tropicals Plants or something. So obviously I'm going to say that the Vitarifolium, the Politiflorum, and the Wenlingeri are probably my favorite. And then if I could add any um, strap leaf, pink leaf, and therium to my collection, it would be the Lutheri. What are the different types of Gloriosum? Again, I am not the right person to ask, but I have inserted this before in a different video and I will just, um, where am I going to put, where am I going to put it? Uh, I'll put it over here on the right side. Um, this is from Glory Hosum's Instagram. It's a good reference if you're trying to find uh, what the differences are between some of the different forms. So I'll just play this little slideshow for you while I get this. Shit. I'm gonna rip some of these lower leaves off because honestly they're just getting in my way and if you get in my way you get ripped off that's the tea it's kind of painful ripping these leaves off but at the same time I'm like can you go also um, while this slideshow is still playing hopefully I know that a lot of you guys watch YouTube on your TVs but just an FYI, I do include quite a bit in the description in terms of like products used in the videos, people I've mentioned and stuff. So yeah, if you um, ever have a chance to go on your computer or on your phone and look at the description of my video, um, oftentimes you can find the answer of what you're looking for in there in terms of like people I've talked about or um, references like this I've thrown up and stuff. So yeah, all of that will be linked down there. It is really, really hot in here. Oh my gosh. All I want to do, to be honest, is like go for a long walk with my headphones and then, because right now it's like really sunny, but it's nice and like chilly and crisp outside and then I want to jump in the shower. Oh my gosh, that sounds so nice. It's weird, I've been actually really loving taking a showers lately, which is very, very not like me because showers used to be my kryptonite and they used to be a trigger for me, but you know, she's gone to therapy and she's, she's on the road to get well. I can't even tell you guys how amazing therapy is. Like, if you're like hesitant to try it or you just feel like it's a scam, I promise you it'll change your freaking life. Can this leave? I need this leaf to go like this because I need this stem right here. Or I need it like I need I need I need why is this plant growing 360? That's my main question and concern like the way that I'm about to rip these leaves off just for getting in the way I know it's not perfectly it's actually not perfectly where like the stem would normally grow like up a tree or something but it's freaking close enough and you know what I'm getting I'm getting mad anxious wait what did I say oh um thoughts on predatory bugs um I think that they're great 
I wish that I could use them all the time, but honestly, they're kind of expensive and shipping for them is like insane. It like costs more than the, the bugs themselves sometimes. It's also a gamble because not all of them will hatch, especially like in different um, conditions. Like some mites will only thrive in like warm and humid areas. So like if I wanted to use mites out here or something, like they might not hatch or like wake up the way that they're supposed to. So then it's kind of just a waste of your money. I know that everyone has a different experience. Like there's a, there's some people who are like, no, I just have my mites like in my cold living room and they are totally fine. But in my experience, like they have always done best inside of a greenhouse. So for me, um, using using mites or predatory bugs as a sort of biological control of pests inside of greenhouses, I think is great. But in terms of using it for like outdoor spaces and stuff, it's not, it's not my go-to. I wish that it was cheaper. I wish there was a place that I could literally get it locally and just pick up my bugs and not have to order, order it online, especially since some of the minimum orders are like 50 sachets or 100 sachets or 500 sachets. Um, and it's just not, it's just not in my budget to do that all the time. So I'll say if you can afford it or you're like, you know, you have a group that you can um, order with, I say do it. I've had really, really good experience with having bugs and I definitely found my pest situation to be a lot more under control when I had something like Thrifex or, um, what is the other word, Swirskis. And I just wish that I could do it all the time. It's just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not able to order it all the time because of the cost and uh, I'm not also wanting to set up like a group order where I have people come pick up here because seriously, organizing pickups is like one of my least favorite things to do in this entire world. That's that. I'm going to, I think I'm going to fill this pole with tree fern fiber. My feet are so hot. I want to take these off, but then you're going to look at my toes. You got paid for that. Advice on a reverting Florida beauty. Unfortunately, um, I have also been a victim to a reverted Florida beauty that came from a highly, highly, highly variegated mother, which was surprising. Um, and I tried growing it out. I tried chopping back. It, there was nothing that um, I could do. Once you don't see any variegation on that stem anymore, I just find that you're you're done for. So, um, I don't, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. I feel like I got really lucky with my second plant. It just had really, really great genetics. And, um, I, I never had issues with any of the leaves reverting. I definitely have a good combination of plants with like a lot of sectoral variegation. And then some that are just a little bit, a little bit variegated, but it's like the perfect balance and I hope I didn't just jinx myself yeah I will say that with my Florida Beauty though I have sorry this is really loud I will say that I have always grown it in um very very bright light like at least I don't know like 250 like minimum 250 to 300 uh foot candles if not more right now it's definitely getting more than that um, and I've always had it in a greenhouse. I right now it's sitting in my open exo, so it's like not really in a greenhouse, greenhouse, a, a greenhouse, a greenhouse. But I mean, technically, it still is. Um. No. What the hell is a mint monstera? <laughs> um. I think it's the monsteras that literally look super minty in color. Was that a good enough answer? I'll see if I can throw a photo of the mint monstera online or online. Okay, am I okay? I'm literally just like, I feel like, um, you know when you are like slightly awake, but like you're still sleeping and someone has a conversation with you and then you just start like saying random words and it makes sense when you say it and then you fully wake up when you realize this person is laughing at you and then you try and play it off like, I feel like I'm having one of those moments right now. I'm just like 
same random shit. So yeah, I'll try and throw a photo up of it. From the photos that I've seen online, I've never actually seen a mint mascara in person, but they're really pretty. They're very expensive though. I feel like people are just kind of just throwing out random ass names for these like monsteras, especially like sport variegated monsteras that look a certain way. They just like give it a random name and I'm like, is that for real? Or is did you just call it that? I don't know. I feel like the name naming in the plant community right now is just kind of wild and I can't keep up. I'm like, who's okay, who's that? Oh, I thought that was that this last week and now it's this this week. I'm so sad that this leaf got ruined. It would have been so dang cute. Look how chunky it is. I've just really, really grown to love this plant so much. I know that it's nothing like super special. You know, the leaves are just, I mean, there's really nothing great about like the texture of the leaf and stuff, but I've just really, really grown to love it. And um, I can't wait for it to get larger. So hopefully it does well during this transition or else I'm gonna be very upset. I think I have a splinter and it hurts. Oh, she's a wobbly girl. So I'm gonna stabilize this with some moss. I can't express to you how uncomfortable I am. I'm honestly, my legs, they are on fire. They're burning and my back is on fire. Everything hurts. She's done. I'm very happy. There's a gnat flying around in here. Um, but yeah, she'll, she'll be able to live on this pole for a really long time, hopefully. And she can also live in this pot for a long time. I feel like I upsized both of them quite a bit. So she better be thankful. Now, I think that is all of the soil plants that need to be repotted. So now we're going to be working with some pond plants. I can't breathe, I'm claustrophobic. Does that say 52 minutes? Oh my gosh. Next question. Um, if you had to start your plant collection all over again, where would you start? I've actually, ow, ow. I've actually been in this situation before when I moved from the States to Canada. I had to get rid of all of my plants. Um, I didn't have a lot. They were mostly just like, you know, um, it was like a fiddle leaf fig. It was, ow. It wasn't even a splinter, it was Pudge's hair. <laughs> I'm a mess. Okay, let's do um, this bunny and therium. Uh, so yeah, I've been in this situation before. I had to get rid of my Monstera, my Bird of Paradise, my Rubber Tree. I just had a bunch of like common, common plants, but they were like on the larger side. Uh, I gave some to my mom and I just got rid of the rest of them. So yeah, I have been in that situation and the first thing I did when I moved here was get another Monstera. That was like, that was like first on my list. I just honestly feel like a house is not a home unless you have a Monstera. Doesn't matter what kind, just get some kind of Monstera. My go-to is just the good old green, green Monstera. Um, don't care large form, small form, any Monstera. That's just like, it's my comfort plant. It's the plant that gives me the most grief in a way because it's like so prone to, to thrips, but it's the plant that makes me feel like the most excited about plants, which is really funny. Um, like no matter how much I've gotten into like the imported aeroid hobby over the last few years, the Monstera is still one that like I would choose over and over again. So yeah, let's say if I had to start over um, again from where I am in the plant hobby now, uh, yeah, Monstera would be my first, my first go-to plant to get. And then I think the second plant that I would get is probably a green Congo. I still want to get one of those. Um, I do have a Rojo Congo that I'm trying to rehome because I want to get a green one. Um, I tried to love the Rojo Congo more than the green one, but it's just not there. So maybe in the summer I'll get lucky with like a really nice green Congo. But for now, um, you know, it's fine. The Rojo Congo is sort of scratching that itch. 
some of these roots are like super rotty and not great which i'm not surprised about because this thing dried out so fast in that pond and i can tell by the way that the roots look that it's a dry rot like um i have shown this in a different video but obviously i don't expect you guys to like remember every single thing that i do on this channel but i showed you the difference between like rot rot and then dry rot dry rot it's uh more than likely you'll be able to still see like the shell or like the outer layer of the um of the root and it just kind of loses everything inside of it it just dries up and turns to nothing and then you're left with that like shell or like that casing around it so yep not surprised but it is fine because we are going to be moving it into a more delicious pond and into something larger so in theory it should do better but if not then that is user error um next question do self-heading plants need poles so if you don't know what a self-heading plant is it's sort of like an arborescent or tree-like plant in that the stem is like so thick and um, like stable that it can hold the plant up on its own and typically with self-heading plants the leaves literally grow like on, right on top of one another like they're stacked so tightly that there's like little to no stem visible stem unless the leaves fall off and then you can see it down at the bottom but even with self-headers, I've found that um, in a lot of the mature ones that I've seen growing like in Hawaii or um, like, you know, they have like the big ones at the malls and stuff, like it eventually kind of needs something to at least lean on or like hold on to because if it gets too tall, um, I think that they, they do end up like falling over. Uh, I think especially if it is an indoor plant and not a plant being grown in the wild. I could be wrong because I've never grown a self-heading plant to that uh, size or that level before where like I had to, you know, I, I could find out on my own whether it'll eventually need um, something to, to climb or like something to support it at least. But by the definition of it, a self-heading plant is a plant that essentially like supports itself. An example of that is what I was just talking about, the philodendron rojo combo. Um, and I will say that mine, it had start, it started getting really tall and leggy because I removed some of the lower leaves that were affected by um, thrips. If the leaves if the petioles of the leaves weren't leaning against the pot itself, it would lean over. So yeah, in that sense, my self-header was not very independent. Definitely needed some support, but I have seen a very, very, very large green Congo that is essentially supporting its own weight, but I believe that it was like leaning against a pillar. Like some of the leaves and the petioles we're leaning against the pillar of the building to hold it up so I can't say for sure if um, it was completely supporting itself but yeah I guess I don't have a definitive answer to that in terms of like maturity with a self-heading plant but self-heading plants when they're little typically can support themselves at least in my experience thoughts on buying corms on Etsy I think it would just depend. It would depend on the kind of allocation that like you're buying. So let's say for example, I wanted a silver dragon, but I, for whatever reason, couldn't find one locally or I couldn't find like an established plant or like a small plant on any shop online that could like ship to me. Then probably if I was on Etsy and I saw that someone was selling five corms for a decent price, then I'd probably go for it but I would only buy from them if they had enough good reviews um, that I could trust that they're selling what they're actually selling or like I won't get scammed or whatever. I also would not buy a corm of a variegated alocasia online only because the corms are not guaranteed to be variegated. 
So like if you're gonna splurge on a single corm on Etsy for a variegated plant, I would say that's kind of a gamble. Um, and it's really up to you. But for me, I would not buy any sort of expensive uh, corm that even if I could see like what the mother plant looked like, it's just so variable and more than likely if you get a non-variegated um, plant from the corm, the person s selling it is going to be like, well, you know, you should know that it's not guaranteed to be variegated and they might just pin that on you. So in that sense, I wouldn't. But again, if it was like a bundle of corms where I can have some insurance that like if one of the corms dies or one or two of the corms die, I can um, still have some as a backup. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and splurge on like a bit because I would love a variegated allocation. I don't have any besides the fry deck. But um, yeah, there's no chance in heck I would pay for a variegated for, um, a variegated allocation corm online or on Etsy or whatever. No matter how um, positive the reviews are, I still wouldn't. But if it was a non-variegated allocation and it wasn't just like a single corm, I probably would. Um, how do you propagate begonia or care for begonia? Mine always melt. I'm just... I'm just okay at growing begonia. I feel like the ones that I have right now are all pretty like low maintenance and they don't really require that much of me. Probably the most high maintenance one I have right now is the one that I got from Amanda and I can't remember what the name is. Oh my gosh, I'm hurting so much. I need something to put my, oh, I can put the tree from fiber in here. So yeah, I that one I am struggling with a little bit. I've already sort of moved it into different areas of this plant room um, and the leaves were melting. So uh, right now I have it in my tent. It seems to be going, oh no, it seems to be doing okay. The roots on this are freaking terrible. That's not good. Poor thing. It was just way too wet in here, that's what she said. But I really didn't think the roots were going to be bad on this. Like, the plant looks totally fine. I never would have suspected that it had rot. But I can see um, some brand new roots, so it's going to be fine. It's just... We've gone, we've gone backward a little bit, but not all hope is lost. I can tell my posture is so terrible right now. Uh, do I want to keep this in tree fern fiber? Like, a not-so-wet one? Or do I want to move this to pond now? My gut is kind of saying pawn just to like start that transition now and get those roots acclimatized to pawn. Sorry. This is going to be too big for it now. So we're going to go a little smaller. I think even this will be fine. I think I'm going to do pawn, honestly. I, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. So. I need to drink because I feel like I'm choking. Sorry, going back to the question of the begonia. Um, <laughs> sorry, I feel useless right now. Um, most of my begonias are growing in ambient conditions. I only have one begonia in a cabinet, which is the one that I got from, from Amanda. And the rest are in no drainage. I definitely recommend no drainage for begonias because they're super, super rooty and they're really thirsty. So if you have it in no drainage, you're gonna be able to retain a lot of that water for a lot longer. Um, I have killed my Sinbad in no drain, in drainage, going back. I have killed my Sinbad in the past using a pot with drainage because it would just dry out so fast. So I will say um, no drainage definitely if I have to make a recommendation and just depending on the kind of begonia you're dealing with, I find that it actually melts if it's in too high of humidity. But I know that a lot of begonia prefer it because they're like terrarium plants, some of them just like to be in like little cloches and stuff. But most of the begonias that I have have done better in ambient conditions and lower temperatures, but I'm not the begonia girl. I'm not the right person to ask 
for begonia care that's just kind of like been my experience with the very little amount of begonias that i do have in my collection so um if anyone else has some begonia advice please also feel free to leave those in the comments it would be appreciated a lot i hope this thing bounces back so crazy i really didn't think that those roots were so bad considering like how perky it is still and like it's not soft like they're nice and firm very very interesting and then in terms of propagating begonias i have not had any luck with leaf propagating a begonia i tried <laughs> it went horribly it melted so bad that i couldn't even find it um, but I have had a lot of luck with just regular stem propagations in water. Water has by far been the fastest rooting method for me. Ow! Um, I've also rooted in perlite as well, but with the coarse perlite, like perlite um, that is really, really porous, like, like this, um, the begonia roots are really fine, so if you're not going to just be plopping that right into your vessel, um, so, sometimes the begonia roots grow into it so much that it's almost impossible to like remove it from that perlite because it like grows into the little, you know, pores inside the perlite. So just keep that in mind. I really don't want to do this splendid today. It's like pissing me off just looking at it. I need to stretch my leg. Oh, that feels so good. Um, I think the last three I'm going to do are these little tiny bebes these three um three anthuriums and one alocasia so let's do this one first and i'm just hoping i don't mess this up badly um i am gonna do pawn as well so uh my the next question is what is your go-to rehab substrate do you still use the parfait method yes um i think a big a big miss understanding about the parfait method when i first started talking about it on my channel is that that was just like my go-to rehab substrate all the time or rehab method all the time and i explained it in i don't know why i always do this like oh, i'm gonna remember i explained why i even started using the the parfait method and it was to rehab this monstera that was just so finicky and there were like three layers of it that were rotting like the stem the petiole and the roots and so i wanted to use a different substrate for each of those three layers which is how the parfait method came to fruition um and i really only do that method if it's something like that where it's like the roots are very sensitive to water or the stem is really sensitive to being dry stuff like that where i feel like i can cater the plants needs to the different substrates that i have but like let's say if i just have you know a plant like like this that is clearly not happy and is sort of suffering i'm not going to put this in a parfait method so I still use the parfait method. It's just for certain kind of plants, but um, my rehab substrate choice right now is definitely perlite. I've had the most luck rehabbing my plants in perlite. My go-to method before would have been um, moss for sure, but I haven't been using moss as much. And besides, um, besides perlite, I am also using tree fern fiber with pond mixed into it, or at least perlite mixed into it. I think I'm going to do pond for this one too. Um, are there any plants you regret buying or owning? <laughs> this question gets me every time because I try to not be a regretful person and I try to say that every experience that I've had in this hobby was for a reason and that I always got something out of it. Um, and I mean, that's true. I feel like you don't really learn unless you're experiencing things firsthand and you're making mistakes and you're trying different things. So in that sense, no, I don't have any regrets that way. But do I regret spending so much money on some of these? Hell yes. Yes, I do. Um, in terms of recent buys that I regret, I can think of one right away. And that is the Ethereum Exticulatum. 
I showed this in my spring cleaning video that I posted last week or something. And I literally had that one out of the um, propagation dome for like, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at most. And it turned into wet spinach. So um, this is that plant and you can see it's firm right now. But if you watched that video, you would have known this looked like wet spinach. It was just completely dehydrated and just hated life. So this is a plant that like will never see the outside of a greenhouse and I'm not down, I'm not down, I'm not down for it. So I might just give it away or maybe accidentally slam dunk it into the compost bin. We'll see, we'll see where the day takes me. But yeah, that's one I definitely regret buying. I think my friends and I got really intrigued and sucked in by the look of the mature leaf at the i think it was like the echo Jenner show and we didn't really do a lot of research on how finicky it actually was and had i known it was going to be an ethereum that i couldn't grow outside of a greenhouse there is zero chance i would have spent money on um importing it and uh yeah just it never would have made it into this house so that guy really got lucky. Well, I should say unlucky. <sighs> these two freaking seedlings. Okay, the only reason I'm keeping these seedlings are because they look so different than the other seedlings that came out of my batch. And I just kind of want to see what they're going to look like. But holy smokes, do they look awful. They're terrible. Okay, I think I'm going to... This one has a new leaf coming, but I think I'm gonna rip this leaf off because I just can't bear looking at it anymore. And then same with this one. It's it's really giving me the, a fright. So yeah, that is one that I regret buying, but in terms of ones that I regret owning, I, I don't think, I can't think of any. I feel like everybody that, or every plant that has come into this house has been a part of the journey <laughs> um, and I, yeah if I took that back then I would take back everything that I learned from that from that experience as well and I just think it's part of it so that's my answer thoughts on using humidifiers I was an avid humidifier person um, for a long time actually um, and I, I don't know, I felt like my plants did pretty well using humidifiers. I feel like they definitely enjoyed the boost in humidity, but, uh, I feel like in 20, 2022, so last year, I feel like I hit a point where I needed this hobby to work with my lifestyle like i think i think that from like 2019 to 2021 i let my life revolve around the needs of my plants um and now that i'm out of that mindset and i'm out of that place in my life now it's kind of reversed like i need my plants to work around my life so for me filling up a humidifier every day or every other day was just not it wasn't in the cards for me and i realized that like i was only filling or using my humidifier like once or twice a week if that because i was just like no i was too lazy to fill it or something so i'm like are the plants around this area of the house like where this humidifier is is it actually benefiting from it or is it just like kind of like humans where you know you take a vitamin c pill and you're like oh i'm so healthy it's like you have to be taking it for a long period of time for it to like do anything right i kind of felt that way about humidifiers and um i also found that using humidifiers inside of a closed uh space like inside of a greenhouse it was too much things were getting really um moldy and just gross and it just was not the vibe so in that sense um yeah i stopped using oh there's more i stopped using humidifiers and now i'm just sort of relying on the environment that i'm giving it i'm relying on 
the areas that I place it in the house. I'm relying on mycorrhizal inoculants to make it a more resilient plant. And in that way, I'm, I'm, that's how I'm dealing with these higher humidity plants that would have loved to have a humidifier that no longer have one. But I'm not, I'm not gonna say to anyone like, oh, don't use a humidifier because it's not gonna do anything. Um, I don't think that's true. I feel like if you're using like a tiny little humidifier in like a, a humongous room, it's probably not doing as much as you think. I do miss seeing humidifiers in my house though. Not the actual humidifiers, but like the mist. I always found it to be really pretty. It made me feel like I was in a jungle and I don't know, it was, it was a vibe. I liked it, but you know, I wasn't gonna keep them around just so that I can be like, ooh, look at, the, look at the mist. If these two Ethereum don't get their ass together, they're gonna be yeeted off the balcony, I promise you. All right, last one for the night, or last one for the day before I go on my walk. I'm so hot and I just wanna go, I just wanna go outside. So what should be the last, oh, plenty goals for the year. That's a good one. For one, I want, I don't want a majority of my focus this year to be revolved around pests. I feel like the pest thing has taken over the last like three years of my life and it's like almost made it, it's almost made me hate this hobby, seriously. I'm like, is this even worth it? Like what the f So I want to be more proactive in terms of pest, um, pest prevention so that I'm not always like on the defense, you know? So there's that. And then I really just want to focus on my collection. I don't really want to like bring home a lot of new plants this year. I really want to focus on getting my current collection like really, really blown up. Like I have certain plants that I'm really working on, like my Tenu, where I want to see like some some good growth and some decent growth. So that's something I, I want to see my, specifically my philodendron, I wanna see them get a lot larger if I can. Of course, I'd love to see my anthuriums get bigger too, but at the same time, I think my goal for, sorry. My goal for my anthurium is just to acclimatize to my living room and to be happy there because it's definitely been a journey with, with them too. And then I think that's it for like all my plant goals. It's very simple this year, um, sort of getting back to basics and um, just focusing on the ones that I have and really loving on them. I mean, I would love to, like if we go on the other side of that, I would love to cross off like one, at least one of my wish list plants this year that would be nice i feel like last year i crossed off a lot of them and some but if i could mark off one this year that would be pretty exciting and i'm hoping it's <laughs> the spiritus sancti or the burly marx's flame i know i sound so cliche like oh yeah you like those plants I, I just i really do i really freaking do i've loved it since the moment i saw it and this was before I even knew it's what the, like it was the price that they were at. Like I literally, when I first saw a picture of a Spirit of Sancti, it was one that was not super big. And I was like, oh, I'd love to have one of those. Like, I wonder where I can get it. And then I like researched the price and I was like, so I'm not getting that. But I just, you know, I love the Billy. I love the Atabacuense. I just, I love the shape of that leaf. It is so Gorgina. I can feel myself getting stuffy. Why? My feet are on fire. I'm not kidding. Um, to be honest, I answered most of them. I think there's maybe five that have gone unanswered, which I will answer in another video. But I think for now, that's where we're gonna um, we're gonna end it. Ouch. I think everybody that I wanted to repot got repotted except for this sad sad soul which i'll leave for part three the last the last part of this long q a series but i really don't do many q a's throughout the year so um 
yeah, it's kind of cool that I get to answer a good majority of them and I'll open up my questions one more time to hopefully give you guys another long repot video and get some of my repots off of my to-do list. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. I'm sorry if I was blabbing or if things didn't make sense. I've been in a state of delusion all day, I feel, and I think I just need sleep because I didn't sleep well last night. But anyway, um, all of that to say, what is it? Over your right ear means you're taken. Left ear is single, or is it the other way around? Okay, so um, we've reached the end. I'm gonna get out of here, it is freaking hot. My ass hurts, my legs hurt, my back hurts. I'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air. You should get some fresh air too if you haven't gotten fresh air today. Um, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube. Thank you everyone for being here. I am almost at 14,000 subscribers, which is madness. I hit 1,000 subscribers on my vlog channel. If you have not gone to the vlog channel yet and need some non-plant content to consume, I hope I see you over there too. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I love you so much and I will see you in the next one.